Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at floor plan. Now I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm probably biased towards the theme of this game. My day job deals with floor plans and reading AutoCAD drawings, so I was definitely intrigued by the theme of this game. Now this game is a roll and write, where you're going to be rolling dice and you decide whether you to use a pair of dice to build a room, or use each die individually to create features in the rooms and around the surrounding areas. Now you're building both of these to fulfill client demands for the new space you are creating. So, will we be impressed with the game's results, or will we be cancelling the game's contract? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, then we'll come back for my final thoughts on floor plan. Here's floor plan set up. Randomly select one of each of the build, design, and layout client demand cards. Each player receives one blank floor plan, then set one die to six and roll the other die. Each player must then draw a six by whatever is rolled on the other die, size of room that encloses the shaded square. Each player must then put an L in the shaded square in the center of the sheet. This is your first room of your house and is a living room. The game is played for a number of rounds until either one player has fulfilled six demands from the client demand cards, or a player has a full map and cannot use any dice for either a room or two sets of features. During a round, one player will roll both of dice and all players will simultaneously use the rolled dice and then check for endgame. To use the dice, you will either use them together to draw a new room or use them separately to add two sets of features. To draw a room, you must draw a rectangle that matches the rolled dice in size. It may not be inside of another room, completely enclose a smaller room, completely enclose a drawn feature, or overlap anything already on your sheet. Once you have drawn your new room, you need to decide what type of room it is. You will choose the room type based on one of the two dice rolled. It is up to you to decide which die to use for labeling. Write the single letter label in one of the squares in the inside of the new room. Nothing in the future can occupy that square with a label. For example, if you roll a 3 and a 4, you draw a 3 by 4 room and it can either be a bedroom or a kitchen. So you'd either write a B or a K in the new room. If you do not want to draw a room, you can use both dice individually to draw two sets of features. You must draw the full quantity of features. So again, if you roll a 3 and a 4, you must draw 3 windows and 4 furnishings, and they must be drawn on unoccupied spaces. The only thing that cannot be rolled are pools. These automatically occur when you place stones that completely surround an empty space on your blueprint. Once you have that, you fill in that empty space with water. It is now a pool. You are all building these features to meet the client demands that were turned up at the beginning of the game. Each client has two ways to score points. Each demand can be scored multiple times, but you may not use the same room or features on your blueprints to fulfill the same requirement multiple times. When you have fulfilled a demand, you'll write the points on one of the sticky notes at the bottom of your sheet. It is your choice of where you write it, and each sticky note can only have one score in it. But, when you fill in a sticky note, it's going to give you a one-time bonus that can be used sometime during the game. Now you do start with one free bonus, that is the wild. You can treat one of the dice just rolled as wild. And whenever you use a bonus, you put a check next to it to show that it cannot be used again. The other bonuses you can get are double a feature. If you're using the dice for features and not rooms, you can double the number of features built from one of the dice used. Or there's double a room. You can build a second room using the same dice, but you can label it using the other die if you'd like. And finally, you can draw two doors. The game ends when someone has filled in their sixth sticky note by fulfilling six demands, or a player has a full map and cannot use the dice that were rolled. Each player will then score the layout bonus from the layout client card, and this is the only demand that cannot be fulfilled during the game. Then you add up all the points from fulfilling demands during the game, and then the layout bonus, and the player with the most points is the winner. Let's get back to see what I thought about floor plan. So theme components. I thought the theme was extremely well done, and it works, and it makes sense. When you finish the game, you can walk the other players through your house. You'll walk in the front door, into the bathroom, through the main bedroom, and into the dining room. You know what, but I just enjoy the theme. The components are functional, but nothing spectacular. I did like that each player sheet had all the options for the room and the features on one side. And the sheets are single-sided, but with always drawing on one side, I'm not sure I'd want them double-sided. The demand cards, although not plentiful, were well done, and I like that they showed you examples of what the demand is on the cards themselves. Overall, I'm fine with the components. So on to the gameplay. I think from the overview, you've already made up your mind on this game. The gameplay is nice and simple. The rules make sense and are easy to explain. Now there are some little quirks on the rules. For example, not using the same feature and the same scoring makes sense, but it is something you need to remember. You know, uh, for example, if you need a pool near a deck, 
you can't have pool deck pool and score it twice. You need that additional deck. Now there are a few more quirks to the demands, but luckily in the back of the rule book, they have clarifications for all those. So if you have any questions, you just go there. This game doesn't have the thrill of getting combos like some of the other roll and write games out there, but I'm actually okay with that in this game. It means this game is easier to play and the turns are pretty quick. Yes, sometimes people take a little longer to decide what they want to put where to try and fulfill the demands, but I've never found that any one person was winning in an inordinate amount of time for all the, all the other players. So, would I recommend this game? Yes, I would. I think one of the biggest pros this game has is at the end of the game, almost everyone wants to show off what they created, and that's fantastic, and the players will walk you through the house they've created. I like that. I also like that the game was really easy to get into. I have very little explaining to do. You roll the dice, and you draw something. The rules on what you can draw where just kind of make sense. No, you can't put a window in the middle of the deck. It needs to go on a wall. I also like that the game was very approachable. Now, as for some of the negatives, this game is not a deep game. and will not be something I play you know, multiple times in a row. Yes, I enjoyed my plays, but I'm kind of ready um, to move on to something else when I'm done. I do wish that there are more varied demands. There's only five of each type, and they're pretty similar. I'd have liked to maybe have more variety in the difficulty. Why not have a big difficult objective that has lots of points, but it means you're foregoing some of the easier ones. I'm also not sure this game is going to last in my collection. I enjoyed playing it, and have introduced a fair number of players to it, and I'm not sure whether my rating is going to stay the same in the long run. But for now, I am really enjoying the game. So I'm going to give this game a 7 out of 10 in the Dice Tower seal of approval. If you're looking for a nice, light, roll and write game that is approachable to a wide variety of players, this is one you should definitely check out. And at the end of playing it, I'm sure many folks will want to show off their creations. And that's fantastic. But that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.